Good day, my friend. This is Charles with the Exodus Logistics Learning Centers, which features the Freight Broker 101 training for beginners. Uh, we have our live Zoom trainings on Tuesdays and Friday evenings, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, tonight, we are going over the basics for beginners of being a freight broker from uh, starting your brokerage, from even conceiving the concept of being a broker, right? What does all that involve? Are you even ready to be a broker? What is the concept? What is a broker? Right? What are their duties, their responsibilities, things like that? So once you get to a point where you decide that that's the case, then um, a freight broker over a freight dispatcher, uh, because the, the two are different, then you will um, apply to become a broker. So the requirements, the prerequisites, you know, you want to have a business license in place, uh, EIN, uh, whether it's an LLC, S Corp, what have you, um, maybe a business plan in place. You want to have an outline structure of your back office infrastructure in the form of a business plan. What is your mission statement? What are your goals? What are your projections? Three years, five years, what have you, whatever that business plan concept you utilize. And then once you get past the prerequisites, then you get into the requirements of being a broker, freight broker. Again, this is for beginners, those who know very little, if anything, about freight brokering or a logistics provider. Okay. Um, so you, the first thing you would do, obviously, is apply for your um, your authority. And the number one place to do that is the um, FMCSA website. So fmcsa.dot.gov. You go on there as a new, um, a new entrant, or or returning entrant. If you had started the process and you had to step away from the computer and log out, you just log back in with your credentials. In any case, you fill out the OP1 form. You start that process. You apply for what's called a broker of property type of authority, because there are two types. There's a broker of property. And then there's a broker of household goods. So you do the OP1 form, uh, the MSC, I'm sorry, the MCS-150 form, which is the DLT. Um, it should be inclusive within the OP1 form. You should get a DLT and an um, MC number um, simultaneously. So number one, you apply for your, your um, authority. Uh, next, you're going to have to have a bond, a $75,000 bond. Um, that amount has increased from the Obama administration of $10,000 with the MAP-21 um, legislation, moving ahead for progress in the 21st century. That's what that stands for. The amount was raised from $10,000 as a bond to $75,000. Kind of, kind of like to um, deter a lot of people from applying for being a broker, getting their bond, because a lot of people who were either not qualified or not ready to be brokers were um, applying for to be a broker. So it was kind of oversaturating it, in, in my opinion. But um, the, the MAP 21 legislation moving ahead for progress in the 21st century um, raised the bond requirements from $10,000 um, to $75,000. Um, the type of bonds you can have are the surety bond, which is the BMC-84, and the trust fund, which is the BMC-85. Uh, those two, the surety bond, which is the BMC-84, is based on credit and it determines, you know, the level of credit determines the percentage of the premiums you're going to pay on that 75000 uh, So let's say you had good credit and the good credit uh, range of percentages was between 2 and 5% for good credit. 2% of 75,000 is 1,500. 5% of 75,000 is 3,750, I believe. So the range of annual premiums will be between 1,500 and 3,750 annually for someone with good credit who applied for a surety bond. So you just simply take those numbers and divide that by 12, and that'll tell you how much you will pay monthly. The trust fund is more of a $75,000 in escrow kind of a thing. Um, so those are the two types of bonds, the surety bond and the trust fund. Next, you will need a blanket of coverage or blanket of companies, which is the BOC3. What that is is a process server or a process agent 
someone who's qualified to receive um, legal documentations if someone was to serve you papers legally. Okay, so that, that form is the BOC-3, blanket of coverage or blanket of companies. Uh, there are several process companies, process server companies all over the country. We have those resources in our back office as well. Uh, next is the UCR agreement. Um, that is the Unified Carrier Registration. Brokers also need to apply for that as well. So you have your authority, your bond, your process server, your UCR, and then finally, you will need some insurance these days as a broker. Um, the type of insurance coverages that I've been noticing um, are general liability, um, contingent cargo, and ENO errors and omissions. Those are the ones that I've been noticing. Um, so you also need that. So once you get past the point where you've met the requirements to be a broker and your authority has become active, now what? Now, what do you do next? You know, what do you think? I'll get my, what do I do next? I'm stuck. I don't have nothing to do. What do I do next? Well, now you have to think about, you know, building your credit, consider getting some financing as far as factoring companies to help float and pay the carriers that you get. Once you get a shipper to give you loads, get an account with those shippers to give you loads. You have to look at your back office infrastructure of your brokerage you know, your low boards, your TMS systems, things like that. We speak about those things. We talk about factory companies. We talk about uh, different types of TMS software, the different types of factory companies. And then we get into the um, going after the shippers, getting customers, getting accounts. We have different sales strategies, whether it's email scripts, cold calls. We have sample scripts that we go over, talk about, um, dissect and strategize upon qualifying questions that are in those scripts once you get a hold of a shipper, a potential customer, what are the right questions to ask that will get the results that you want. Then once you get to that point where you have the results, now what? You get a shipper to say, I want you to quote a lane or I approve that and send me over your uh, paperwork, your credentials, your agreement, your contract. So now we have sample templates in that, a broker shipper agreement template but we have that um, but prior to that you want to be able to understand how to how to quote a lane you know what are the questions to ask when a shipper says well I have a difficult lane yeah maybe you can help me um, quote this lane for me and then you need to know what the right questions you should ask that shipper or get their email and let them know I'll give me a few hours I'll get this information back to you with a proper quote because you want to put your margins on everything and get the right numbers that line up with the competitive market rate that goes to the carrier minus your margins and then present that to the shipper. So that's just a high level um, concept there. Um, shipper presents a low tender. Low tender is nothing more than the details of the lane, uh, where it's picking up, where it's delivering to, number of stops, pallet counts, any special instructions, weight, uh, dimensions, commodity, equipment type, different things that are specific to that specific lane and that specific load. Um, you take that load tender, of course, and you put that in your TMS system. Um, next, you have to get a carrier to move that load. So you have, um, as a broker, you need to produce a, um, a standard broker carrier contract or broker carrier agreement. You have to qualify the carriers, make sure that they are, um, they meet your, yours and your customers um, criteria to run loads for that customer. So once that happens, then that load tender becomes a rate confirmation, which is nothing more than the load tender itself um, minus your uh, margins, right? So you take your margins off of there and then you produce the rate confirmation and that is the rate that goes to the carrier. And then you put as much details of the load for the carrier to successfully run that load. You want to make sure that they have all the information they need. So, so after that, of course, then your carrier, um, once they're onboarded, was set up with your brokerage, then they will um, pick the load up from the shipper's address um, and receive what's called a BOL, B-O-L, Bill of Lading. This um, describes the load, it gives the pallet count information where it's picking up from, where it's delivering to, the shipper signs their area, the carrier's 
um, trailer is loaded. They receive that freight in good order and good standing, and they load it on their trailer. The shipper signs the area on the BOL, the carrier oftentimes initial or signs next to that, verifying that everything was good, pallet count, nothing damaged, things like that. Then the carrier transport the freight to the receiver. Uh, once they get to the receiver, the receiver checks the freight, make sure everything's good, nothing's damaged, nothing slid in, in, the, in the trailer, nothing gotten damaged, the pallet counts are okay. And then they sign the, um, the BOL in their area on the, on the BOL, the receiver area. Carrier verifies that everything's in good standing. Once the receiver signs it, that removes the broker. It indemnifies the broker from responsibility because once the receiver signs it, they're saying it, they, they're taking possession of it and ownership of it, and they are saying that everything is in good condition. We take ownership of it. We indemnify you, the broker, from responsibility once that signature is made. Um, so we go over these things in detail. We talk about strategies and concepts. Um, tonight, we are having a basics um, Q&A and a basics overview of the process of the movement of freight from the time that the um, load tender is given to you by your customer for that account to the time that the carrier delivers that load to the receiver, okay? And everything in between. And if you have questions, you can tune in as a guest, log in for members. Um, we go over this more detailed. We have access to our back office portal uh, and everything in between. Uh, if you have any questions, I can be reached at 757-515-1684, or you can email me at exoduslogisticsllc at yahoo.com. Um, hope to hear from you guys soon. Again, if you want to become a member, all of our information is on the website under Freight Broker 101 on the exodusdispatchingandtraining.com website. So this, uh, the description of how to get to us will be in the YouTube um, comment section or the description section. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Um, but tonight, as well as Friday nights, are um, Freight Broker 101 training for beginners, live um, Zoom trainings. So if you want, and they're typically for members only. Uh, tonight, Tuesday, I am allowing guests to come in to ask their um, Freight Broker related questions. Guests who are new to the transportation industry from a broker's perspective who may not know anything or very little about being a freight broker and what all that entails. So hope to see you guys this evening. Uh, this video will be posted with the comments um, and the contact information in the uh, comment section. Thank you.